We'll be getting started here in just a moment. Uh, we'll get the PowerPoint pulled up. Uh, we'll, I know we got a few other, few people who will be joining us here in a bit. And uh, we want to make sure everyone has a chance to get up and ready. Uh, so give us just a minute or two and we'll get started. Thanks. So thank you everyone for being a part of today's answer hour. Uh, this is Richard Davis, the director for alternative dispute resolution at the Department of Labor and Industry. Uh, we're excited to be able to come in front of you again today, provide uh, another version of the uh, updates about what's happening uh, with campus. Uh, and we have a couple of our trainers, Aaron Fredrickson and Brian Mack, who will be doing some additional demonstrations uh, of the system. Uh, so we're excited to have them come in uh, walk us through uh, some of the things that they've learned and they're anxious to share with you about how to navigate campus and be more efficient in utilizing uh, this new system. Uh, if I can get my screen to work. So at the outset here, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the issues that uh, we certainly have heard from you all that we know about and what our uh, processes are to address those and deal with them. Uh, and then we'll have some general updates and reminders uh, discuss the campus releases that are uh, in the works now or things that have gone out here in the last couple of weeks. And then I'll turn it over uh, for the demonstration and the Q&A portion of today's festivities. As far as general updates and things that we would just want to reiterate to folks about using the system and just to build off of what I uh, mentioned there, it's absolutely critical that when you are entering details in campus, especially for searches, uh, that the uh, information that is entered is entered accurately. Uh, so that means making sure that there are no typos in the name, uh, making sure that any ID numbers, whether it's a WID, JCN, uh, social security number, making sure that those numbers are accurate, and then also verifying uh, that the date of injury is correct. I believe that we've uh, recently sent out a reminder about this, but I'll just mention it here. If you have questions about the date of injury or if, there, if you're looking for something and uh, can't find it, please reach out to our help desk. Uh, this can hopefully avoid uh, the need for uh, creating a claim shell or going down a path that might uh, be otherwise unnecessary. So uh, we just want you to make sure that you're being precise in the information that's being entered into campus so that the system can work uh, effectively and efficiently for everyone. Another point uh, that I believe came up at our last answer hour, I just wanted to speak to briefly, uh, was around any and all claims access. And this is a reminder uh, for folks that we do have a process in place for any and all uh, claims access. Uh, this is a manual process for DLI staff members, um, but it does exist. And there are a few steps that are listed here uh, that need to be followed in order to uh, avail yourselves to this any and all cl uh, claims access. Uh, this information should be submitted to the uh, DLI help desk. And here's what you're going to need. You see it listed there, some combination of the WID number, the date of injury, a file number, and the employee's last name or the employee's last four digits of the social, the date of injury uh, and the employee's last name. But going down this path and providing this information to uh, our folks in, in the help desk area on uh, our CRT group will 
allow you to get any and all claims access. We've uh, verified with those folks that uh, the process is working. Uh, and so if you need that and uh, want to take advantage of that, as it's currently constituted, uh, please use this process. Again, this is something that we got information on through the uh, survey as far as uh, any and all claims access. Uh, we're still working with our project team to uh, scope what this might look like from a um, uh, technology perspective in terms of integrating it into the system. But as that's under review, uh, we just wanted to make sure that people were aware that there is a process that is currently available that you should uh, utilize if you're looking for any and all claims access. Uh, another point we wanted to highlight here, something that uh, a couple of people uh, within the building have uh, called out we wanted to share here. Uh, as a reminder, it's in your best interest to utilize the same DS number uh, for certifications when you're, excuse me, on, on certain notices uh, so that your admin conference request is attached to that same DS number. And again, the idea here is that we're trying to just make sure that the system is working uh, effectively and efficiently for everyone. And that means making sure that the documents are properly routed and assigned uh, and there can be instances where it will also help ensure that the same DLI mediator arbitrator uh, for both things is uh, is attached to um, both requests. Uh, it also makes sure it also helps uh, when it comes to uh, ensuring that uh, issues are populated or excuse me the issues for um, the conference are already there. So please take advantage of that and utilize that same DS number uh, when you are processing your request. And then lastly, this is just a general reminder. Uh, we're going to continue moving forward with our answer hours and our newsletters. Uh, we have a newsletter actually slated to go out tomorrow and uh, we will be uh, scheduling our next answer hour uh, in a couple of weeks, uh, whether it's a Thursday or not. We'll just go through and look at our calendars, but we'll be getting that date uh, finalized here shortly uh, so we can continue with our rhythm to communicate with you and make sure that we're sharing with you any uh, new news that is both relevant, timely, and particularly useful for uh, your ability to navigate the system. If you have thoughts, comments about uh, what we should be covering, uh, if there are things that you're struggling with and you would like to see it covered in this particular setting, uh, by all means, send those uh, topics or issues to us. You can send it to, to me, to Brian, to Aaron. Uh, and we'll be sure to cover that in this particular setting. Lastly, I just wanted to again um, remind folks that we have set up that WID lookup tool. We released this in our uh, in the wake of our last answer hour, so it went out, I believe, on that uh, Tuesday of the first week of March. Uh, this is a direct result or direct, uh, yeah, this is a direct result of the feedback, excuse me, that we got from the survey. Uh, we heard loud and clear that folks wanted this, that they thought that this would be a value add. And so we wanted to uh, get this done and addressed uh, as soon as possible. So I'm happy to, to report that uh, the, the feedback thus far has been positive. People have been using it. And I think that folks are seeing a lot of value in having this uh, functionality available again. Uh, similar to what we had under the old system. So we're glad to be able to, to have rolled that out. Uh, we will continue with our biweekly releases, um, those release notes uh, with information about the, the changes and the updates to the system uh, will be shared in uh, our newsletters uh, to provide some additional context and details about what, what it is that uh, we've improved in the system uh, to improve the overall user experience. So uh, stay tuned for that, and that should also be included in the uh, newsletter that goes out tomorrow for this particular round of uh, updates and releases uh, for campus. All right. So with that, uh, Aaron, if you're on, I am going to turn it over to you uh, so you can uh, lead this particular uh, version of demonstration for uh, campus and take the uh, questions that come from the folks who are here with us today. Aaron? Yeah, thank you very much, Richard. I think what All I'd right. like to do is go through uh, some of my slides first. And if you could advance to slide number 12, that'd be greatly appreciated. All the way down? To number 12, right there. All right. So as Richard was talking about, you know, 
in the campus environment, we're using a bunch of different terms and terminology. And one of the things that I like to think of it is uh, when you're you're learning or working in a new language. And I think just from a personal experience, I've self taught myself Jamaican Patois and doing kind of a crash course self study to become more fluent in it. And part of it is I need to you know, unlearn some of my American English and immerse myself in, in a new language. And I would challenge people to um, take up the, the same cause uh, with, with campus. Uh, within campus, we still have WIDs, and these are uh, the nine digit number that starts with an EE. Uh, claims, and I guess we've always had claim numbers, we just haven't been reliant upon them, but that is a number that starts with a CL. Uh, followed by nine digits. Uh, and uh, think of a claim as uh, a specific date of injury uh, for a specific employee. Uh, and so with each new date of injury for an employee, you're going to have a different claim. Uh, and then following that uh, down into uh, disputes, uh, which what we'll, we'll talk about uh, later on, uh, a dispute, you can have multiple disputes. Uh, within a date of injury. Uh, and then some of the other, uh, I guess, numbers that we float out there um, are documents or DOs. Uh, so Richard, if you wanna advance the, to the next slide, we can kind of see how this works um, in campus. And one of the reasons why I wanted to highlight this is uh, when we're working uh, with interested stakeholders on issues and, and uh, we're, we're trying to find a specific dispute, a DS number, we get um, a uh, a claim number that starts with a CL. Um, I think you know part of it is from a training standpoint. In retrospect, I probably would have created some sort of slide that that looked like this uh, in the training process. But here we have one particular employee with a, a common WID number, uh, and this particular employee has had three different dates of injury. Uh, with each different date of injury. Uh, that particular employee is going to have three separate claims. So you have a claim number for the January 1st date of injury, uh, the February 5th date of injury, uh, and the March 15th date of injury. Uh, then with each uh, uh, the claim, so let's take the claim of January 1st, uh, this particular person has a medical dispute, a DS, and a rehab dispute, another DS. Uh, the second date of injury, they just have one dispute, a medical dispute. And then the last date of injury on March 15th, uh, the, uh, this particular person has uh, three different dates of injury. And I guess I could have extended a line from the claim uh, to those three different disputes. But I think campus, uh, at least from my experience, becomes a lot more um, easier to work with in terms of an environment. Uh, when when we kind of think of the hierarchy of starting with the WID, meaning a specific employee, uh, then thinking of a claim as a specific date of injury for that particular employee, uh, and then moving down uh, to the individual disputes or multiple disputes underneath uh, a particular claim. Uh, so this might be a slide that will be helpful to kind of help you understand uh, the, the campus organization. And again, I think in retrospect, I probably would have encouraged uh, the trainers to have built uh, something like this for us to use in terms of educating you. Uh, so going through, Richard, if you could backtrack to slide number eight. Um, here is an example of the, the old process that we had. Everything was, was driven by forms. And I guess this concept of the old forms is another thing uh, that at least I see is, is causing some problems and just want to uh, use this as an opportunity to uh, discourage moving on to the next slide, please. Uh, to stop thinking uh, about uh, the old process uh, and everything being driven by a form. Uh, moving to slide number 10, please. Um, this was a slide that we had from our training. And again, um, thinking of everything as using uh, the web form uh, where we are within a particular claim. So we're within a date of injury for a specific employee. 
Uh, we're locating the claim. Uh, we're choosing the action that we want to do. Uh, certification, administrative conference, uh, or mediation. Uh, moving into step number three, telling us about the particular issue, uh, whether it's medical or rehabilitation. Uh, moving on to number four in the flow chart, uh, filling out the, the questions or the information, uh, including attachments uh, to the web form. Uh, moving on to step number five, processing it by certifying it with our signature, uh, serving and filing it. And as a result, we get our what we refer to as request for assistance, RFA an RFA for a medical dispute, which we formally referred to as a, a, a rehab request or a medical request. So again, kind of keep this uh, uh, in mind as you're navigating in uh, the campus system. Uh, Richard, if you could move to the next slide. Uh, so really, um, this is the, the current process that we have, again, using the, the new language of campus that, that I like to uh, talk about to initiating a dispute via a web form uh, and creating that dispute underneath a claim and then moving into the transaction, uh, which is the event that is going to happen. Um, so with that, uh, hopefully you found these slides uh, useful. I'm gonna go ahead and share uh, my screen and we're gonna do uh, some demonstrations. Uh, within uh, the campus test environment. Uh, so here you can see in the upper right hand corner, I am uh, pretending that I'm the world famous uh, plaintiff attorney, uh, Bill S. Preston. And I have uh, uh, the, the, the claim detail screen. We can see right here, it's the claim detail screen uh, because it's, uh, it starts with a CL. Uh, the claim ending in 415 uh, relates to Cleopatra Calderon's date of injury of September 1st, 2020. Uh, moving down into associated cases and claims, um, she's got a lot of stuff going on. Um, this is a huge moneymaker for uh, this particular attorney. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, what Richard was referring to earlier is, uh, in this particular instance, uh, Bill Preston had filed a request for certification of dispute on behalf of Cleopatra Calderon. Uh, we can tell uh, that we're in the dispute details page because again, in the upper left-hand corner, it has a DS number. Um, I know that it's DS ending in 304. And again, when we're communicating and trying to refer to a specific dispute, uh, making sure that we're providing that that uh, alphanumeric number uh, that starts with a DS. Um, this is uh, uh, an example. I can tell that the dispute has been certified under the dispute overview. Um, I can see uh, where the certification button has been highlighted. And what Richard was referring to earlier is now that this dispute has been certified, it's a medical dispute. Uh, the next step that I want to do is go ahead and uh, file my RFA uh, so that I can get the dispute into litigation and administrative conference. Uh, what we've seen some people doing is going outside um, of, of this dispute screen that's been certified and using the, the drop down on the main screen uh, to initiate a dispute. The problem with that is it um, basically starts you over from scratch. It creates a lot of confusion. Uh, you end up going through the certification process again. Uh, if you have a dispute that's been certified, uh, simply navigate to the submit a filing button in the upper right hand corner of the dispute details page. I want to go ahead and submit a filing and I wanna choose a dispute action. It's gonna ask me what type of dispute resolution service I wanna ask for. Um, 
we want to request an administrative conference. And we go ahead and can complete the information that way. Um, there are no additional documents that you're going to need to attach because this dispute is already in, um, includes the documents that you submitted for uh, dispute certification. Um, if there happen to be some additional disputes or, or documents that you want to file at that time, you can certainly do that, but you would do it after completing the RFA process. Um, one of the reasons why I know I'm completing an RFA is it says uh, down here in dispute issue and document summary. Uh, this is a medical issue. Uh, there's one issue, I forget offhand what the issue was that we're certifying. Uh, the document to be filed with uh, Department of Labor and Industry as a request for assistance. So I know by this, uh, these pieces of information uh, that I'm filing uh, the document what was formerly known as a medical request. Uh, and then I can go ahead by completing that particular process, certifying making sure that my affidavit of service information is properly filled out. And I am gonna go ahead and submit that form. Um, by completing that, I have now filed my uh, request for assistance uh, for a medical dispute, and I don't need to do anything further. Kind of one of the highlights that I wanna show off is again, if I wanna see that particular document, let's say that I wanna include a document in either my paper file or, or my electronic file, um, open up the tab. I have my document here. It's ready for download. This hyperlink right down here, related links is helpful because it tells me what dispute uh, this is related to. Uh, let's say that I've accidentally closed my dispute details page. All I need to do is just right click to open up an extra tab. And I'm back at the dispute details page where I started out. Uh, and I can see um, the documents again uh, that I've completed. Uh, and right here we have the request for assistance uh, that was just filed here uh, uh, a minute ago. So um, Richard, any points uh, that you think I need to um, add here or any questions in the chat box? There's a suggestion that came from Victoria to be sure that we imp um, input these steps and instructions into the FAQ page. That's a more than fair ask, Victoria. I think that that's something we'll be, we'll be happy to do for you. All right. So I'm going to go and log out of Bill Preston. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in because I want to demonstrate um, a process in terms of uh, filing an answer. So just bear with me for a second. Where I'm going to pull up uh, the world famous workers' comp defense attorney. By specifically focusing in on uh, the dispute number, this is a, a different dispute that I had set up uh, for this particular case. Um, I'm now responding as uh, the defense attorney. Uh, different dispute number, because I can see in my upper right-hand corner, it's a dispute uh, for Cleopatra Calderon ending in 310. Um, this has also been great billable time. Uh, for Herbert Garrison. And in fact, this is probably his only file that, that he ever works on because so much stuff gets filed. Um, if he wants to see the documents, again, he can go back here. 
Um, this is a request for assistance and, re or excuse me, a request for certification that was filed. Uh, there was a dispute on it, it was certified. Uh, Bill Preston then went and filed the request for assistance. Uh, we can check and see if there's any events scheduled. There's no events coming up. Uh, we have our parties down here, responding party, employer, insurer, et cetera. So he's gonna file a response. Uh, he, again, within the dispute details page, and it's important to be within that dispute, submit a filing. Uh, what he is gonna do is uh, medical rehab response. Again, selecting one of the parties that he represents. He's not gonna add any parties. There's no potential interveners or interveners known in this case at this time. Uh, disputed issue. Uh, this is a rehabilitation issue regarding uh, rehab consultation and eligibility. Um, whether or not he agrees or disagrees, he's obviously in disagreement. He can add a uh, reason or rationale uh, for disputing, so he, it's per an IME report. One of the things I like is it shows you where the typos are. So I'm just putting here that the vocational rehabilitation services should be denied per the IME report of Dr. Rockstar. Uh, the work injury was temporary in nature and fully resolved. The employee is not a qualified employee for the role. And again, I'm demonstrating that I am, in fact, a terrible typer. Um, in here, I want to include my supporting documentation. So I'm going to go ahead and find that uh, IME report from Dr. Rockstar. This is something that we spoke about two weeks ago, ignoring the document category. Uh, just going to document type, document type for 106 conference. I'm going to add a description because I am a nice person. It's the IME report of Dr. Rockstar, uploading the document. I need to serve uh, the parties. Just double check to make sure everything looks good. Right here, I have my document detail that's gonna be included as an attachment. And I'm gonna go ahead and submit uh, filing. Some of the problems that we've seen, and if you have problems responding, um, please go ahead and contact us through the help desk. Sometimes it's something internally that um, someone might've done um, on our end. And it's, uh, I would say from my experience, 99% of the time, it's as simple as flipping a switch and turning a knob. Uh, certainly too, as we uh, improve our internal efficiencies on some of these things, um, I think the error rate will be, will drop dr dr dramatically uh, in that regard. Um, other times it might be troubleshooting a technical issue when reporting um, let's say a technical issue uh, when I contact or send an email to the help desk, I'm going to um, specify I'm having a problem filing a rehab res uh, uh, re a response on a request for assistance. 
I'm having problems on DS02 5853301. Um, by providing that specific dispute number, uh, it helps draw the attention, um, at least to the person that um, triages that. Uh, and like I said, 99% of the time, it's maybe a, a switch that needs to be turned or a knob or dial. Uh, and we're able to get that issue resolved in a fairly uh, quick manner. Uh, so with that, I think that that ends the demonstration phase, unless Richard, you want me to kind of highlight something else, or I don't know if Brian is, is on the line, if Brian has um, a comment or has any suggestions too, as far as something that I should demonstrate, uh, but we can take it away with uh, question and answer. Hi, Aaron, this is Brian. The only thing I would, suggest would be to have people watch when they're doing that affidavit of service to make sure that the people they have clicked to be served are either um, are either marked as being served electronically or by mail sometimes it might show up where the service method says no service needed and those people are not going to be served so make sure people that you're serving are going to be served either by electronic service or by mail service and if not you can just add them in that add service party section button that's right there at the top of the service group. Yeah, and unfortunately, Brian, I don't think I can go back right now, but you know, the important thing, I think what you're trying to drive home is just to make sure that that um, affidavit of service section is complete. So um, yeah, thank okay. you for adding that. Yep, what you're showing there, Aaron, is the two sections of those served by mail where everyone's got to drop a copy in the mail and those served electronically. So the service needs to be one of one of those two ways. So right here, we know that that mall snacks will be uh, served by mail and everyone underneath this list right here. So uh, Bill Preston, Herbert Garrison, uh, et cetera, will be served uh, electronically. I think with that too, is it's important, what I was pointing out as far as not using the old forms. This right here um, is essentially the form that we were using before. Um, so even if you're including the old form as an attachment, um, it's the ability to save uh, the duplication of time and effort. Um, uh, and, preparing the old form and then going ahead and dropping everything into the web form. Um, so by answering all the questions, uh, you're essentially creating that old form. Aaron, I see that Kelsey had written a comment uh, directed to you about a topic you and she had talked about recently. I wonder if you wanna take a look at that and comment. Okay, response, it actually serves us the attorney. Yeah, I'm, uh, my mind's drawn a blank on that, that entire conversation. Uh, Kelsey, I'll, I'll take a look at this a little bit more and hopefully refresh my memory. And from my perspective, this is Brian again, I think it might be serving the filing party, the parties who did the response, maybe as a way the campus is just sending out confirmation, email confirmation to you that it was done. But we'll take another look at that, like Aaron said. Yeah, I, I think that that's it, you know, and part of it is, um, you know, it gives me the confirmation number that I'm filed. I mean, it might be something the development team could look at as far as avoiding excess um, emails coming in. Uh, but then again, too, it might be nice for some people to get that confirmatory email that something was in fact filed. But Kelsey, I'll definitely, um, uh, my mind's drawn a blank on that, uh, on our conversation. So I, I, I apologize to the, about the specific situation. Any other questions that we have out there?
I think even too, while we're just maybe waiting for someone to get the courage to um, type in another question is when we were preparing for this meeting, it was Richard, um, the, the two unit supervisors, Donna and Sandy, uh, Brian and myself and a couple other people, we were just kind of brainstorming on issues uh, that we can present on and make things useful. Uh, certainly feel free to reach out to if there's something that you continually have a problem with uh, and would like it addressed in one of these calls uh, where we can uh, do a live demonstration. One of the nice things too is this is being recorded so we can use it for uh, future training purposes or, or post it. I see that uh, a comment came up. I had a nine page affidavit of service on an RFA because every single claim adjuster from Gallagher Bassett was served. Is there a way that we can choose just one rep? And Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the development team is, is looking into kind of fixing that problem. It has something to do with uh, permissions as far as being a, 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 a service uh, designee and receiving those messages. Oh. It's possible that uh, it's possible that uh, there could be an issue on their end, but I don't think we've heard one. So I think right now, and I've seen that too with the Gallagher adjusters. I think uh, we've got to assume for now that uh, that Gallagher has chosen to have those adjusters all be service of process designees. So that's how they wish to have their stuff come in. And I guess you can't tell someone else what to do. So it's like telling someone how to spend their own money. Um, Anything else, Brian, that you think uh, with these two demos that I did um, that I should address or? I think, Aaron, the only thing I would want to uh, remind people, and you've talked about this, um, is uh, when they're filling out, is when you're, they're at the section about picking the disputed issues to make sure to actually select those specific issues. Don't just go to the rationale section and not choose an issue. This is primarily when you're filing a request for assistant, because those disputed issues are basically how you're populating the first page of the former medical request or rehab request. So you do need to pick an issue. And make sure, the other thing I'd remind people when they're doing a request for assistance, uh, you had selected those, all the other parties, Aaron, when you did your demo. And I think sometimes people don't do that. They think, that maybe they think that because the claim was identified, the dispute will automatically pre-populate with the proper parties, but the filing person actually does still have to pick those parties. Yeah, what Brian, what you were referring to, and I apologize, there were some typos on this when I created the slide. So just look past the typos. <laughs> yes, when people are, creating the request for assistance, they're skipping that disputed issues tab. And it's important that we go ahead and add, add number two in there, uh, because that's driving problems with people not being able to file a response. So for example, on this one, uh, the employee needs glasses. Um, I was probably thinking of myself because my wife tells me that I'm blind and I was trying to read the fine print on a prescription bottle the other night and I had to get a magnifying glass out. Uh, but if I would not fill that section out and down in the lower part where it says explain the details of the request, uh, an issue would not be created. And then if Brian was the defense attorney and trying to respond to this, he would have a hard time doing that. So by adding the disputed issue, and I can add multiple issues here, um, so let's say that I also wanted to um, get a reimbursement for a prescription. After creating the first issue, I'd go back and click on the add issue button and add another issue. Um, I could certainly provide a longer explanation in the bottom, or if it was multiple pages, I could use the supporting attachment section and upload uh, a PDF document with what I've typed out.
Anything else, or are we going to give everyone the gift of time? Yeah, thank you, Aaron, and thank you, Brian. Yeah, I was just getting ready to jump in here and say that um, it seems like we may have covered the vast majority of things that people wanted to have discussed today, and uh, it sounds like we do have one follow-up, the um, exchange you had with Kelsey. Uh, we can certainly follow up on that. Um, the only thing I would add here, and if I can pull my screen back up to share, uh, just as a reminder uh, to folks that uh, we will have the newsletter coming out tomorrow, as I said at the um, at the outset, and uh, just please continue to go to uh, our website and look for updates, uh, latest and greatest about what's happening. Uh, you can certainly go to uh, the cam that Campus Central page. And then there was also a suggestion, I thought it was a good one, that we include some of the steps that were covered uh, by you, Aaron, today. We can uh, translate that into maybe a Word doc or some sort of a um, PowerPoint uh, that we can include on the FAQ page as well. So those are some uh, good comments and a uh, good suggestion that we got. And if there's nothing else, oh, and the last thing, just as a reminder, um, please you know, reach out to the help desk uh, for assistance or if there's a, a need for some additional training or you're looking for some one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, types of interaction with uh, the DLI staff. So with that, it uh, looks like it's 1245, so we get to give back um, a, a solid 15 minutes to everyone as a gift of time. But we do thank you, and uh, we look forward to uh, connecting with you again at our next Answer Hour on the week of the 22nd. And uh, stay tuned for that uh, invite, that Outlook reminder uh, to be sent here uh, in the days ahead. So thank you, and uh, everyone have a great day. Take care.